Let's have a lesson and discussion on this work. Follow the lesson for free. Just pick up all the tips from the video for free. But if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of all 25 etudes in Carcassi's Opus 60. And there's a link for that in the description. Etude number 25 um, is quite a challenging etude. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, in order to bring it up to the Allegro tempo that it's marked at, I would certainly have to work on it quite a bit more. Um, and polishing it is also very challenging in the context of me uh, putting these out on, a, on every week or two. Um, this particular etude would require um, quite a bit of extra effort and I, I'd recommend that you, if you're going to take on this etude, that you make sure you're at the level to do so, but also that you give yourself quite a bit of extra time. Trying to read the etude, like I was kind of doing today, um, is quite challenging because there's so much navigation of the fretboard that looking at the sheet music while doing all those shifts just presents a lot of opportunity for error. So you must know it, you must have it at least semi-memorized. And of course, if you really wanna nail this one, you probably want to memorize it just because of all the navigation. Now this etude, uh, all of the techniques in this etude have been covered by the previous etudes. So if you have worked your way up to this piece, um, you've kind of done everything in it. It's all been covered by previous etudes. And, uh, but the, the challenging thing here is that he's put it all together and he slapped a Allegro marking on there. And he also has made it quite relentless. Um, it's almost continuous 16th notes from start to finish with a few exceptions. Take that and also combine it with one of the more difficult um, patterns on the guitar, that of triadic arpeggios. So taking, you know, the one, three, five of a triad, the root, the third, and the fifth of a triad, one, three, five, one, and then combining it with like slurs and other figuration uh, creates a lot of specialized fingering that you must know really well. So it's, it's a tough one to kind of just jump into. You really need to kind of work on each, each measure and uh, get to know it um, really well. So nevertheless, we, we've got triadic arpeggios in this. We've got um, figuration in thirds. We have lots of scale passages. We have slurs. We even have arpeggio sections. Um, and even some like repeated note, note sections. Um, so we have a lot of content filled into, into one, one etude, a quite relentless etude. That's my kind of preamble on the piece. Uh, make sure you're at the level um, to take on this piece. I, I wouldn't do this unless you've played quite a few of the etudes. Um, already, if not all of them. Um, and it certainly joins uh, challenging etudes in the realm of like Villa Lobos uh, etude number two, for example. Um, it, this isn't quite as pattern oriented, but uh, nevertheless, Carcassi's throwing a lot at you. So I think what we can do is just do a walkthrough of the piece, but uh, it's just so reliant on you knowing the piece and just having these techniques under control and then spending a lot of time with it. Uh, more time than I just spent uh, with it, I think, in order to, to polish it properly. So let's go through it 
And I'll just mention a few things, but really because this is, is kind of, this is definitely edging its way into the advanced territory, um, I, I'm not going to go over every little measure, giving like little technique tips. Uh, it, it really is a, a more advanced piece. You want to make sure your technique's pretty under control uh, if you're going to tackle this, this work. So um, let's just start going through it. Uh, we have this, you know, this figure that we've played before in the previous etude uh, in, the, in A major here. Where you have like a little hinge bar, but you're fretting the, the C sharp. thought it was this is maybe okay he changes it I go to four here that way you can grab this chord more easily four I do a little bit of a weird move here I go one three four because we have that fourth finger on each fret. I don't want to fold over the, that finger. That's kind of an oddity though, so just uh, you have to be ready for that. And then also with the third finger here. I play this in upper position, you could um, go down to a different position, it's fine, you kind of have time, it's at the end of a phrase, but I I just like to kind of keep my sustain on that upper E while grabbing that lower chord. So that first section is definitely the most manageable uh, sections of the piece. So let's go from measure 9, this section is a little bit more challenging. Although it's more just that you have to know it so well. but um, nothing is like particularly awkward it's just it's just so much navigation I would even say like I thought when I was first practicing this piece at slower tempos I thought this isn't that hard this is pretty easy but <laughs> once you start raising that tempo you start realizing that little errors are so easy to, to pop up in this piece. Um, I'll switch more pages here. This is the same as the opening content. So I measure 33 here, a little bit of a challenge now. I always get that mixed up. Let's 
So that's definitely challenging there. It's even tough to do at slow tempos now for me. Um. But then that shift down. Luckily you're in position there. Yeah, it's, same thing there. You have to be ready for that, that bar. Um, I play this figure in the right hand. A M I P A M I P M I. I'm not gonna discuss a whole bunch of right hand fingering though because it's like different in every measure. Um, you just you're alternating constantly. You're playing bass notes with the thumb. It's pretty straightforward, but it's always changing. So you just have to make sure your right hand technique is really solid in terms of alternation of the fingers. Measure 39. This figure again. I do a little bit of a of a of a relaxation there and then start the final section um, if you want to try to get it you know dead solid you may maybe you'd even want to like refinger it somehow um, play in an upper position but I, I found that was the most straightforward using your second finger then grabbing this with one and three as the free fingers so that's why I'm using three there is just because it's available there. I don't crash them out sforzando so much just because, um, well, maybe just because of the microphones in this room. It was really boomy. So I back off a little bit. I think in a concert hall, you could really like, you know, you know, really give it a lot of oomph if you wish. That final section there though, just the, the final uh, three systems are, are, you know, they're a little bit challenging. Playing a lot of like triadic arpeggios in upper positions like that, it's it's just it reminds me more of my jazz days when I played you know jazz on electric guitar and just doing all those kind of moves. You know, it almost feels similar in that fashion. It just doesn't feel quite as um, secure on the classical guitar just because the action is so high in the upper positions, right? And playing those kind of um, chord forms in upper positions just isn't as regular. So look, um, when I when I go through it at a slow tempo for you here, 
there's not that much for me to say. It's, you know, if you're, if it's for like a, you know, late intermediate to early advanced student, then uh, none of the individual measures have a lot for me to talk about. However, start raising that tempo and you really just start uh, finding out like, oh, that's squeaking or, oh, I missed that shift. Um, I'm just, oh, I didn't get close to the fret there. And, and things, just little mistakes start to really uh, pop out and polishing becomes just more and more difficult with so much navigation. So when you're practicing this piece, you know, practice it in multiple different uh, metronome markings. I would practice it ultra slow, like super, super, super slow. Just to work on proper contact of both hands on the strings and getting everything really secure. Practice at a medium tempo just to actually, you know, practice the piece at a, at a reasonable tempo so you can start to feel the musicality. And then practice at a fast tempo, maybe just one measure at a time, to actually start to understand what will be required of you at the faster tempos. Practicing it in three different tempos gives you the opportunity to work on all the different things. You get to work on like really secure playing and knowing the piece really securely. You get to work on um, just regular practice um, and musicality and uh, smoothing things out. But then you also practice it fast to get an idea of what the piece is actually going to feel like and what the actual requirements are. You just, every time you raise that tempo, just practice smaller sections. Maybe at your fast tempo, you just practice a measure or half a measure or up to a destination point that is giving you trouble. Uh, there's a few little um, section, sections in this piece where I would actually just kind of play up to a destination point to make sure that, you know, I actually have it, you know, really like just getting to that upper position shift and nailing it to make sure that I have it. Um, but yeah, at those three different tempos to secure different things in your playing. And then you just end up spending a lot of time with this piece, really working it in different ways until you, you have it at least semi-memorized, if not fully memorized, and then you'll be ready to start um, doing doing takes of it and and piecing it all together. And finding also like that certain sections are more relaxing than others and that you can actually relax your body and your brain um, during certain sections, like all these things. Those are so welcome to me in the piece because then the triadic arpeggios start again. Um, so take when something is a little bit easier, take your time and relax with it in a few of those sections um, in order to add relief to the piece. So you're not having to be on all the time, but there's like some intensity and then relaxation, intensity, relaxation, and the better you know the easier sections, yeah, the, the more you'll be able to relax and then really turn on the focus on the most challenging measures. I hope you've enjoyed the whole series and all 25 etudes, if you're, if you're doing them. Most students only work on a few um, at their level and then over the years they work on, you know, all of them. But I hope you've enjoyed the series and that it'll continue to be useful. Thanks.